I have another meal I want to share with you today. This one involves pumpkins. If you're interested, keep watching. So what kind of meal can I make out in the wood that involves a pumpkin? Well, a stuffed pumpkin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this pumpkin up, clean it all out. I have a filling that I'm going to put inside of it, and we're going to put it right in the coals of my fire and let it bake with all the ingredients inside. And let's see how it turns out. All right, what we need to do before we can stuff the pumpkin is prepare the filling. So what I'll do is I'll take you down to my prep surface. I will show you what I'll be using to fill this pumpkin up with. We'll get it over the fire so that we can get it prepared. And then we'll empty the pumpkin out and go from there. All right, so I have my pan over my fire. The fire is very minimal right now, which is... Uh, Good, you don't want the fire too high because of course you don't want to be burning things. The pan has been heating up for a moment. And now I'm going to put a little bit of ghee in as my cooking oil for this. I pulled a, uh, that's a little bit less than a tablespoon. We'll say a tablespoon of ghee that I'll be using to cook my ingredients in. And I notice now that the pan is not level. So that's just going to be just make it a little bit more challenging to work with, but that's fine. I'm going to be using gloves for this, of course, to ensure that I don't burn myself. Okay, the butter, the ghee is melting very quickly. First ingredient I'm putting in is onions. I do have a little bit of chopped red pepper. I've got a whole small onion here. Any onion will work. There's no, sp I will put the weights of the onions that I used. I think this was about two ounces of onion with the red pepper included in this little container. Oh, all right, so they're now in. Takes a while to bring those down, cook them down, but what I'm looking for is for them to turn a little bit translucent, even a little bit golden in color will be just fine. And then of course we'll add the next ingredient. There was one more ingredient that I failed to mention that I added after I turned the camera off and that was some mushrooms. I had almost missed them, they were covered up by something. But I've got the mushrooms in and you can see, hopefully you can see everything is starting to turn golden, translucent. And that's far enough along for me to add the next ingredient to this, which is ground pork. All right, so my ground pork, I have six ounces of ground pork here. Now, the amounts are not necessarily need to be precise if you're going to replicate this recipe because it has everything to do with how big your pumpkin is. Are you going to be able to get everything into the pumpkin. And as I look at these ingredients, it's going to be close. I know they'll shrink down in size as they're sauteed and cooked here. They'll get smaller and hopefully there's more room in the pumpkin than I think there is. Uh, yeah, okay. So this is looking pretty good. It, it will take a few minutes now for this pork to cook. So you want the pork fully cooked before you go on to the next step. So I'll bring you back for the next step in just a few minutes time. So I recognize lighting is becoming a bit of an issue here. The sun is uh, starting to set here mid-November. I have to work with what I have. So the ground pork is now all cooked. All the pink is gone out of it. So there's one more ingredient I'm going to add at this point, which is my spices. Now, you can add whatever spices you like, whatever you uh, feel is appropriate for this type of a mixture. For me, it will be a considerable amount of garlic, some summer savory, a little bit of nutmeg, believe it or not, but of course some hot spices as well, with, along with some sea salt. So, yeah, because this is a savory dish, there's about a tablespoon total of spices going into it. Now what I'll do here is just mix this through so that it is distributed around with this mixture. But we're going to take this mixture off of the heat and let it completely cool down before the, we add the next couple of ingredients. But of course that will give us time to hollow out the pumpkin. So, alright, this is ready to come off the heat. Let's hollow out the pumpkin. All right, while we're waiting for the filling to cool off enough before adding the next mixture, let's carve out a pumpkin. So 
This is no different than carving out your jack-o'-lantern at Halloween. Uh, this is just a much smaller pie pumpkin. So by the way, this is not what you would call a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. Their stores will actually sell pie pumpkins. They are a little bit different and usually the meat inside is thicker, which means you use less, less of a hollowed out cavity. Um, I'm going to use my GSI kitchen knife only because a thinner knife tends to work better for this process than my thicker bushcraft knife. Makes it a little easy and you don't want to slip when you're doing this, of course. So, um, yeah, all I'm going to do now is create an opening around the top at about a 45 degree angle so that I can replace the top after I get the ingredients hollowed out. Take me a second to go all the way around, of course. Now, you know, you can cook and eat these innards if you want to. It's not that there's anything wrong with them. Most people choose not to. They're a bit stringy, but they create a spaghetti-like mixture. And if you wanted to save the seeds, you can do that and roast the seeds. There's nutrition there as well. All right. I will be placing all my innards in this bowl so I can bag it up to take home. All right, so we'll save that aside. Now there's only thing left to do is to just like doing a uh, jack-o'-lantern, it's just to get in there. I'll start with a spoon. I may end up with my hands in there. That was always fun as a kid. I don't seem to find it as much fun now anymore, but... Yeah, so this is all there is to it, really, is just emptying it out. Get as much out as you reasonably can. Again, leave. I, I'm going to make sure all the seeds are out, but if I don't get all the stringies out, it's not the end of the world. Like I said, they cook up. I want enough of a cavity in here that I can estimate that my stuffing will go in. Okay, so that's hollowing out the pumpkin. Now let's add the last couple of ingredients to the stuffing. We'll put it all back together and we'll get it into the fire. All right, so the ground pork with the onions and the peppers and the mushrooms has all cooled down completely. In time we can add a couple more ingredients. And the reason we couldn't add these before is, well, one of them is cheese, quite a bit of cheese in fact, if I can get it out. And you're asking, now why would why am I adding cheese to this mixture? Well, let's remember, this is a ketogenic meal. It was already low carb. Uh, I'll give you on screen and in the, in the video description some notes about just how healthy a pumpkin is on a low carb or a ketogenic diet. Most people would think, well, it's some type of a squash, isn't it? And yeah, it is. But believe it or not, most of the carbs that are in this are fiber. That and a lot of water. It also does have some protein and fat, but the fact is, is that this pumpkin is actually a excellent, an excellent choice for those of us who are on the ketogenic diet. And even if you're not, you'll enjoy making this. So I've added some cheese. The other reason I had to wait till this was cooled down is because I'm going to put an egg in. And this egg will not only add some fat and some protein to the meal, it will also help to bind this together after the, everything is cooked. The egg is raw now, but by the time this pumpkin is cooked through, that egg will be cooked as well. So everything is mixed through. Boy, I think I may have just a little bit too much to go into this pumpkin, but we're gonna see, we're gonna see. If I have a little bit too much, that's fine. I can heat it back up and eat it right out of the fry pan or take it home. I'll probably just heat it right up. I've been out in the woods all day. I am ready for a good meal. Let's start by putting the pumpkin in the bowl in case I do have any, or too much I should say, to go in. Did I get it right? I don't know, it's close. It's gonna be close. Now, I can overfill it just a tiny bit, which is apparently what's going to happen here, because, of course, it will 
shrink down, the pumpkin will sag. It'll have a bit more room in it once it's been in the fire for a while. Look at that. A little bit on the ground, let's not waste it. I'd say that uh, was pretty good calculation. Let's get the top on. Now, what I have the fire built up for something else right now, but what I need to do is to wait till the fire burns down to coals. And there are two ways I've done this. I've done this the other way in the fire and it worked out and that was put it directly in just the way it is no no uh, tin foil or, or not tin foil aluminum foil or anything else just put it right in the hot coals you won't ruin the pumpkin it will char and brown and blacken the outside of the pumpkin but the inside will be just fine you just make sure you scoop open or cut we'll be cutting this in half but you will eat everything down to the rind. You don't have to eat the rind. By the way, this rind will be cooked if it's clean and you want to. There's no reason why you can't eat it. The other way, and a lot of people will probably choose to do this, is to wrap it in aluminum foil. So I have two pieces of aluminum foil here. And what I'll do is wrap it up as best I can. And again, this is solely for the purpose of keeping the rind from getting too black. And it'll probably still turn brown. There's hard to get away from that, but that holds everything in. will help hold the moisture in as well. Now, I do have to wait for the fire to burn down to coals, and then we'll set this in. It will take about 15 to 20 minutes of setting this in hot coals before it moves right through. All right, I'm guessing my fire is down to a point where I can dig out the center and uh, create a place to put the pumpkin. Ooh, that is hot in there. So I'm going right down to the earth, bare earth here. I'll get my pumpkin in there. And now I'll just try to heap up my hot coals all around it. I may add a stick or two as time goes. We'll see. Don't want to create too much heat, but although there's plenty of heat coming on here right now. All right, so nothing left to do now except to wait. And I will give it, I don't know, 20 minutes, and then we'll, get, we'll check and see how it's doing. Okay, folks, in full disclosure, I checked it about five, 10 minutes ago, maybe 10 minutes at least, and uh, the pumpkin, I peeled back the foil, and I stabbed it with my knife. It was giving, but it wasn't giving enough. It wasn't as cooked as I would have liked to have had it. So I took it out of the fire, removed it from the, t the uh, aluminum foil, put it back in the coals and put the aluminum foil over it to create a bit of an impromptu uh, oven. Now, what did I end up with? Well, uh, you probably can see this. I think I can turn it around. One side of my pumpkin got more cooked than the other. Now, I did mention before, that black has nothing to do with the quality of what's inside the pumpkin. The, it's just that the outside is black, that's all. So what I'm going to do is I have to go with the way it is now because I'm running out of daylight and I'll be doing this in the dark and I'll only have a flashlight for light. So uh, yeah, I'm going to reposition the camera. We'll take it out. I expect that this side of the pumpkin and, and the, in the ingredients inside are all melted and hot. The other side, only partially so. So at least half of this I should be able to eat with, uh, you know, and, and knowing that it is all cooked. But anyway, let's take it out and take a look at what we have and then we'll go from there. All right, we'll get this out of the fire and we'll put it in my fry pan here. Blow some of the coals off. And the stem is uh, charred and glowing. Uh, let's take it off and have a look inside. All right, so it is cooked inside, just what I wanted to see. Uh, it's all steaming, it looks good. Like I said, this side of it, the charred side, is a bit more cooked than the other. You can see the other side looking, you know, dark, but not fully cooked. So I am gonna slice it open, and I will put it in my bowl, and we will do a taste test, but I know now that part of it is not as cooked as I would have liked to have seen it. All right, let's see if we can get this split open. Oh, you know what? It's giving more than I expected it to give. It's actually more cooked than I thought it was. Great. Let's see. I'm going to lose some of my ingredients here. 
All right, how am I gonna do this? I have to get it over to the bowl. So I think the easiest thing to do is just transfer it like this. And I think we have enough there and it's cooked enough that we can do a taste test with it. So as I mentioned, I qu I'm quickly losing daylight here. Although when I see in the camera monitor, it looks brighter than it actually is here in the woods. So the camera's doing a good job of compensating. Let's have a look at this meal. I'll bring in the, bring it up to the camera in a second. All right, it's warm, it's good, it's spicy. All right, let me show you what I have. So you can see there's my stuffing of all the uh, ground pork, onions, a few red peppers, mushrooms, the cheese and the egg that all went in. And you can see there's steam coming up off of it. So the pumpkin, at least this half of the pumpkin is cooked the way it should be. Um, yeah, let's just do a, another taste test here. Small plane flying over. Okay. I'm gonna try some of the pumpkin. Oh yeah. Get it on the fork here. Some pumpkin on the fork. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's tasty. So at least a piece of my pumpkin didn't cook as well as I would have liked, but this piece certainly did. And my stuffing is, oh, spot on. Wow. All right. So I guess I showed you something I hadn't intended on showing you, and there's some lessons to be learned from it. When I wrapped it in the aluminum foil, see, I have done this in the fire before, as I mentioned, and I did it without the aluminum foil, and it cooked up just perfectly. The only difference was the entire outside was blackened like that half of the pumpkin I showed you. Uh, when I used the aluminum foil, it would have, if I had been more patient, well, it's not a matter of patience, it's a matter of time and sunlight. If I had waited longer, it would have cooked with less uh, blackening on the outside, probably no blackening. There was some browning when I opened it up, but it, uh, it, it was just gonna take too long. So it's, which, which do you want? If you're in a bit of a rush, and you shouldn't be, of course, but uh, like I said, uh, I'm, it's not my schedule, it's the sun's schedule here. Um, yeah, it would do better with the foil as far as appearances go, but it would take that much longer to cook. Without the foil, it blackens the outside, but does nothing to hurt the inside as far as taste, texture, and everything else. That blackening is simply on the outside, that's all. So, lesson learned here, start earlier in the day, take your time, and take and do it properly, and you'll end up with a much better dish than this. Not that there's anything wrong with the one I created, I'm quite happy with it. So this is and has been another one of those low carb ketogenic meals. And as I mentioned, I will put all of the ingredients that I used in the show notes or video description below. I'll put in the macros as I can best estimate them. This is really something that you have to kind of figure out yourself. What is it you want for ingredients? I have the cheese, the egg, and, uh, and the, the, the pork, of course, as my fat sources. Uh, I could have put, and of course there was some oil and butter that I fried it all in. I could have put some more butter inside to let it go down through, so I have a good amount of fat. The vegetables that are in here are simply onions and green peppers and mushrooms, virtually no carbs, well, very few carbs there. And as I mentioned, pumpkin is a great low-carb vegetable to have, and this was a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun to do it this way. So. Let me know if you're going to try this. Maybe you've done it already. Maybe you've done it differently. If you have, I'd be interested in knowing what you did that was different from what I did. Um, yeah, give me your thoughts in the comments section below. While I enjoy the rest of this meal and get packed up before it gets dark, um, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.